Hi everyone, today we'll be talking about primary vasculitic disorders uh, that can feature in the MRCP uh, PACES exam, uh, commonly in the Station 5 context, uh, although um, this can also feature in uh, Station 2 uh, long case history taking. So I think uh, before we go into, into an overview of the primary, vas primary vasculitic disorders, it's important to also remember that vasculitic disorders can be secondary to uh, other connective tissue or autoimmune disorders, uh, such as uh, systemic lupus erythematosus. Uh, yep. So in terms of the, uh, the primary vasculitic disorders, these can be classified into large vessel, medium vessel, and small vessel diseases. For large vessel, uh, will be Takayasu as well as giant cell arthritis. Medium vessel will be polyarthritis nodosa and Kawasaki disease. For the small vessel uh, diseases, they are uh, subclassified into NK positive and NK negative disorders. And for the NK positive, uh, we have the granulomatosis with polyangitis, previously known as wetchness, uh, eosinophilic granulomatosis with polyangitis, previously known, known as shirk straw syndrome, and microscopic polyangitis. Uh, for small vessel, NK negative would be that of uh, Henoch Shrunline Purpura. So before we move on to the specifics, um, I think these are some of the uh, symptoms or manifestations when present to consider suspecting vasculitic disorders. So they can be fairly non-specific, such as fever, uh, malaise, um, but some of the things that we want to set you thinking would be that of uh, rashes, uh, neurological syndromes, as well as uh, claudication, and patients who come in with uh, multi-systemic involvement. Treatment generally is uh, that of uh, immunosuppression, and patients will normally be uh, managed by a rheumatologist. So we talk about Takayasu. So Takayasu is a large vessel um, uh, uh, vasculitis. Uh, the features uh, are classically that of claudication of various sorts. So one can get limb claudication, uh, cardiac claudication would be angina, gut claudication. Um, so this could be an approach for limb claudication to let's say hand pain. Uh, or leg pain, for example, uh, and um, taking a further history, it is important to then to screen for other uh, clinical features of uh, vasculitis. For gut claudication, it could be that of uh, abdominal pain that is intermittent in nature. So just a heads up here, for a patient who comes in with uh, episodic intermittent abdominal pain, apart from your usual colic disorders, gut claudication is something to think about. If this is a clinical feature, it is important to examine all the pulses, looking for any reduced or differential pulses, check for any bruise, and to evaluate for hypertension or valvular disorders. Uh, Investigations-wise, um, starting with uh, inflammatory markers such as an uh, erythrocyte sedimentation rate and CRP uh, can be considered, followed by uh, CT or MRA autogram, looking for the classical luminal narrowing uh, occlusion. Treatment uh, is generally that of uh, immunosuppression uh, with steroid and steroid sparing immunomodulators. Uh, surgical intervention with significant uh, vessel disease can be considered in consult with the vascular surgeon. The next condition is that of giant cell arthritis. This is an important condition to consider in a patient who presents with a headache in the patient's in the station 5 uh, exam. It is important to look for other features such as jaw claudication uh, as well as any vision problems. Vision problems are important because this suggests the need for emergent steroid treatment to ensure that uh, the vision is uh, preserved. Um, patients uh, can also have associated features of polymyalgia rheumatica. So uh, in terms of the physical examination wise, uh, in the approach to headache apart from doing a uh, full neurological examination, it's important to examine pulses, to uh, offer to do a eye examination to look for RAPD, uh, reduce visual equity, and a fundoscopy looking for swollen and pale disc that can be seen in an anterior ischemic uh, optic neuritis. Uh, thickened and tender temporal artery can sometimes be found in patients uh, may have associated valvular disorders such as uh, aortic uh, aneurysms. Investigations wise, uh, so the gold standard of diagnosis would be that of a temporal artery biopsy looking for multinucleated giant cells. Uh, initial investigations of uh, ESR 
uh, can be considered for screening and vessel imaging can be done in instances when the diagnosis is unclear. Uh, steroids are the mainstay, especially uh, for the uh, purposes of site preservation. And subsequently, when that has been stabilized, uh, steroid sparing immunomodulators can also be considered. Now moving on to the medium vessel vasculitis, uh, polyarthritis nodosa is one of those conditions. It is not unca associated but can sometimes be secondarily caused by hepatitis B or C or some of the um, hematological malignancies such as hairy cell leukemias. The um, clinical features can be quite non-specific, such as fatigue, weight loss, fever, atrocious. Um, but one of the things to consider would be in a patient who has a neurological dysfunction, they can get mononeuritis multiplex. That is uh, a fairly common feature. They can get GI or renal problems such as uh, mesenteric arteritis, uh, renal insufficiency. So investigations-wise should be uh, targeted at looking at an organ involvement based on the symptoms and clinical features. So creatinine, troponin, uh, nerve conduction disorders. Uh, and car ANA is mainly to look for any differentials and an arteriography uh, as well as uh, relevant biopsy of the affected areas uh, would be the investigations of choice. Wetchness, uh, previously known as granulomatosis polyangitis, I think the key uh, things to note would be, uh, number one, these patients often have uh, ENT involvement, uh, sometimes pulmonary symptoms too, and we know. So the patient who comes in with uh, pulmonary renal syndrome or someone who comes in with, uh, with a GN, RPGN kind of picture, rashness is something to consider. They can get other features such as rash or ophthalmic manifestations, but I would say the key uh, symptoms affected are that of ENT involvement, so they can get uh, long-term or, or very severe sinusitis, they can get pulmonary involvement coming in with hemoptosis, or um, pulmonary symptoms such as breathlessness, uh, and uh, or pulmonary hemorrhage even, and uh, renal involvement. Investigations-wise, uh, ANCA. Uh, so this is ANCA-positive uh, vasculitis. Uh, renal investigations, uh, urine investigations, lung investigations, as well as biopsy of the uh, affected organs. Uh, next would be a close cousin, uh, eosinophilic granulomatosis with polyangitis, previously known as Schuckstrauss syndrome. Uh, these patients, once again, can get uh, ENT involvement and lung involvement, but the lung involvement is um, typically more asthma-like uh, rather than uh, frank pulmonary hemorrhage. Um, these patients may present with late onset, poorly controlled uh, asthma. So this could be a patient who comes in with uh, asthma and it is important to then take a thorough asthma history to find out when this diagnosis was uh, ascertained and um, how their control is, if they are compliant on multiple inhalers and things are not under control, it's important to then look for uh, other features such as chronic rhinosinusitis and importantly, evidence of neuropathy in the form of mononeuritis multiplex. There can be associated rashes with uh, shock straws also. As the name suggests, eosinophilic uh, granulomatosis with polyangitis. Eosinophilia is a cardinal feature to look out for in the full blood count. Uh, inflammatory markers such as ESR, CRP can be, checked, can be sent for. Uh, they are associated with uh, PNK positivity and subsequent uh, pulmonary and uh, nerve-targeted uh, investigations. Of note, uh, classically for the pulmonary findings, right, uh, patients can get transient pulmonary opacity, so these can be fitting in nature. Uh, the last condition is that of uh, HSP, you know, short line purpura. Um, it's often a pediatric condition, but can also occur in younger adults. Uh, the, it comes with uh, four key uh, features. Number one, a vasculitic rash that presents uh, as a painless palpable purpura classically. It can get uh, abdominal symptoms due to bowel wall vasculitis and can be complicated by intussusception. It can get renal impairment, the form of nephritis and arthritis. These are the four. Uh, key features. Investigations-wise, once again, will be targeted at the respective affected organs and if, let's say, the diagnosis is equivocal, we know biopsy can be considered. Management for HSP is generally supportive. Um, there is a role for steroids and immunosuppression if there's significant renal involvement. So uh, we've come to the end uh, of this talk on the vasculitis, uh, primary vasculitis disorders. I think the take-home message is to have an index of suspicion, uh, in particular in a patient presenting with number one, uh, some form of a rash, number two, 
uh, some form of uh, claudication, so intermittent symptoms affecting different organs, multisystemic involvement, as well as a person, a patient with a patchy neurological uh, uh, manifestations, often uh, heralding uh, neuro uh, mononeuritis multiplex. And secondly, it's important to remember that vasculitis can be primary or secondary in etiology, and we have gone through the primary uh, ones. So I hope that you found the session helpful.